A very good day to you, viewer. You're welcome to your very, very interesting and darling program, Youth Can, on independent television, ITV. I am your host, Joy Igoche. You know, Youth Can is that very interesting program created by ITV to reach out to youth with creative, entrepreneurial, and educative ideas that are geared towards the development of the society. And today's program promises to be very, very interesting as we'll be talking about something very salient and its prevalence today in our societies. We'll be looking at preventing gender-based violence as youth. Yes, gender-based violence as youth. So the first thing to ask, because when you have something called gender-based violence, you want to know what violence actually is before having this variant, which is gender-based violence. So according to the World Health Organization, I think the baby boy violence is that intense or the tumbling act that is performed by individuals to each other. And violence is the intentional use of physical force or power, threatened or actual, against oneself, another person, or against a group or community that either results in or has a high likelihood of resulting in injury, death, psychological harm, maldevelopment, or deprivation. Yeah, as you can see on the screen, that is how the World Health Organization described what violence is. And gender-based violence therefore connotes the infliction of violence or harm, you know. This could be physical, it could be mental, it could be psychological, against either a male or a female. We would want to know how can this menace be prevented in the society today. So I'll be showing you a video right now. And when we come back from this short break, remember, stay glued to your screen. I'll be having a very special guest to do justice to this topic and give us tips on how gender-based violence can be prevented. Stay tuned. Don't go nowhere. Yeah, welcome back again. And of course, when the screen looks this good, you know what time it is. It's Youth Can. Yes, and today we have been talking about preventing gender-based violence as youth. And like I promised, I said I'll be having a special guest with me in the studio to do justice to this topic. I have with me Miss Abiba Hamid. You're welcome to this program, ma. Thank you. Mm. How are you doing today? I'm doing fine. Okay, I believe you are very ready to talk about um, gender-based violence today. Very sure. Okay, so quickly, in your own view, what is gender-based violence? Now, gender-based violence is um, a form of abuse that happened between two gender, that's a male and a female, whereby um, it either can be emotional it can be physical, it can be psychological, and uh, if there's any form of human violation, then it is definitely um, gender-based violence. Wow. Okay, that's cool. And um, which gender do you think this violence affects the most? Yes, you know, when you hear gender, it encompasses of two um, different um, variables, which is the male and the female. However, people usually have this misconception that gender-based violence speaks to only females, but it speaks to both gender. However, because of the prevalence it has on the female gender, because um, through researches and through data that have come to pass, we realize that the people that face the form, the most form of abuse, are females, and that's why, in order to gain a balance it's usually targeted towards women than men, but um, it speaks to both, but women are more prevalent to it. Hmm. So what is the cause of this type of violence? You know, violence have different variants. Then this one, gender-based violence, because this is very, very prevalent today. And it's like the society has come to adopt this as a normal thing. So what are the causes of this type of violence? Well, one of the major causes of violence in our society is the uh, imbalance we have, the lack of inequality whereby the male gender have feel superior to the female gender. And anywhere there's going to be a power play, then definitely one is um, going to be oppressed than the other. So because of that, we have these um, imbalances 
in our society, even within family structures, whereby you see the male child is being given a bigger role than the female child, or is being groomed to believe that he has a better say than the female child. All this creates the imbalances and now causes people to feel inferior, um, superior over the other, and that's then to produce abuse and violence between two gender. Okay, so let's go to the topic of today, like preventing gender-based violence as youth, you know, as youths and as well-meaning youth in the society. We are supposed to be advocates of things that will make the society develop to a greater height. Mm -hmm. That peaceful, serene environment we want, we are like the active participants to bring about that kind of environment. So as youths, what can we do or how can we prevent this gender-based violence? Yes. So I'll start with um, knowing our rights as youths because a lot of problem we have today is once someone has been violated, he or she doesn't even know the procedure to go to seek for justice. So as a Nigerian youth, the number one mandate you're supposed to put for yourself is for you to be able to know your rights know the process to follow in order to seek for justice. For instance, a lady who has been violated or, or harassed doesn't even know the first point of call to go to. She doesn't know that, okay, I'm supposed to leave my home, go to the police station, report this person, get his details, and you know from there move forward to court and get redress you understand so these are the issues that we have we have a lot of laws we have a lot of policies that are you know guiding us and they are protecting us but because we don't have enough knowledge we're not well informed that kind of causes us not to follow the process and get justice so the first thing is, well, um, you should get informed as a youth and create sensitization programs, awareness programs, like for the youth that are well informed in our society. What have you done to make sure that others know their rights? Have you come together to form um, a coalition or form an organization or form a, a small movement to inform people about their rights? So as youth who, ha who are energetic, who know their rights, then I don't think um, we'll be able to be trampled on if we know our rights. So that's number one um, way we can actually prevent it. Number two is being your brother's keeper. Okay. And if, as a Nigeria, the secular state, we have religion, we have uh, morals, we have things that are guiding us. And one of the basic things is being your brother's keeper. You shouldn't shun when you see another person being abused. You shouldn't... Um, try to say you know consign me it actually concerns you because it grows and once we create a, a society that's enabling for women and girls that is enabling for even the youth then definitely if it doesn't happen to you today if it's your neighbor it can come down to your home tomorrow so that's why we need to be our brother's keeper then um the third point i want to put in as um for the youth is for them to get involved Okay. One of the major challenges we have um, in issues with gender-based violence is that the youth are not being involved. When they speak out, when they you know, do protests, when they actually seek for redress from government, they hold government accountable for their actions and they don't, not from the outside, but from the inside, they get involved and you know, handle positions. If you look at the Nigerian um, government, you know, it's, it's not sorry to say the youth are, <laughs> are not really there so one of the ways is for us to be there so that we can also be among um, people who are changing the policies and uh, it will suit to the demands of the youth okay thank you very much you know you gave this thing a very very broad window to it and um, from what you said um, I want to know, you said some people don't really know the first step to take when they are being abused. So, but we've also had cases of um, ladies that went to the police and they start asking you questions, you know, and like undermining the level of abuse that has been done to you. So how feasible is going to the police? And do you think enough sensitization is being done as regards gender-based violence in Nigeria? Yes, um, if you look at the statistics, you can compare five years to now. 
so definitely they have been grouped however that doesn't um, uh, I don't dispute the fact that we have issues like this but the police um, CSOs CBOs and also RAPA women's right advancement and protection alternative have been doing a lot of things to sensitize create awareness reform and see that these are agencies these are our um, security um, go to call to our people are actually well informed about how to carry these processes like now for instance in fct we have gender dex officers we have social welfare departments these are places that um, victims can easily access and because we have given them um, enough awareness and enough knowledge on how to carry these issues it's getting better but we need more and that's why I'm happy that I'm here because, you know, youth can, youth can actually push for more. You know, it doesn't have to be the government. It doesn't have to be CSOs. Within a small locality, what are the youth actually doing to, to demand for accountability from police and the rest? And we also have sexual assault referral centers. So far, we have 32 in 19 states in Nigeria. And um, these are things that youth are supposed to push for in their own locality for government to take up to also build because it's a, a well um, structured place where abuse um, victims can go to and um, they handle victims better than even police stations or hospitals wow. yes so um, we should push as youth we should push for more institutions like that so that uh, we have an enabling society for women and girls and youth all right thank you very much just before we continue i would like us to see this video quickly and then we'll continue with this interview stay tuned you're going nowhere is gender-based violence gender-based violence or gbv is one of the most common and widespread human rights violations gbv is violence directed against someone on the basis of their gender or sex which results in physical sexual or psychological harm these acts violate an individual's human rights. GBV is most commonly perpetrated by men against women, girls and other vulnerable people. However, men can also be victims of gender violence. Who are the perpetrators? Non-partner violence is violence inflicted by someone you do not know well, like strangers, acquaintances or colleagues. However, violence is generally perpetrated by someone you are close to. This is known as interpersonal violence, which is perpetrated by either a friend or a family member. Intimate partner violence is perpetrated by someone you are in an intimate partner relationship with, a lover, spouse, or an ex-partner. What are the different types of violence? Physical violence is the intentional use of physical force or threats of violence. From a pinch to a punch, any act or threat of violence is damaging, whether the damage can be seen or not. Sexual violence is forcing, intimidating, or even tricking someone to engage in any sexual act against their will. Any sexual act with someone who is unable to understand what they're doing or is unable to consent because of their age and illness, disability, or the influence of alcohol or other drugs is sexual violence. Forcing a lover or spouse to engage in sexual acts is a form of sexual violence, either called marital rape or intimate partner rape. Sexual harassment is also a form of sexual violence that can either be verbal or physical. It occurs in private and public spaces such as schools, workplaces, in the streets and on public transport. Economic violence involves denying a person access to their money, economic activity or other basic needs by either controlling their finances or stopping them from achieving financial independence. All these forms of violence may lead to emotional and physical trauma. Emotional violence can also include verbal abuse, humiliation, and controlling what a person can and cannot do. Emotional and economic violence are as equally damaging and disempowering as sexual and physical violence. These types of violence are often misunderstood or ignored by people, even those we turn to for help, like the police, the courts, and other support structures. No matter who you are, where you live, or who is inflicting it, GBV is never acceptable.
Well, if you ask me, I'm going to say that that video is really, really eye-opening because it's talked about, you know, the two side, the flip side of the coin. Most times when we hear about gender-based violence, it's just about the women and the children. But, you know, people are starting to say that actually the male folks too are being affected by this type of violence. Only theirs may not be as reported as the female cases because it is very rare to see a, a male just come out and say uh, I was abused or I was raped and all. So their cases are not mostly reported. So like what's your take on this, you know, like this um, violence issue being only one side and, um, and also on victim blaming as well. So what's your take on this? So um, I want to say that usually when you see cases like that, it's based on um, social constructs whereby we have, you know, those stereotypes that men are supposed to be, you know, not the weaker beings, the harder beings and the rest. And so that kind of restricts them from reporting. But if you look at the laws that we have, speaks to both gender, like the VAP Act, the Violence Against Person Prohibition Act. So the male gender shouldn't feel um, bad to actually speak up. Speaking out is really, really important. important. And for victim blaming, you know, our society is part of the reason why we have underreportage today. Because especially when viol abuse happens within the family structure, they usually cover it up and they don't want to come out and speak about it. So we need to do more sensitization on that and also inform people that it's okay to actually speak out so that you can seek um, for justice and the perpetrator will be held accountable uh, and um, punished. And this will reduce cases of um, GBV in our society. Okay, so how can you rate government effort in all of this, all of this fight against um, gender-based violence? Yes, I would say governments are doing their best. You know, they have a lot on their table. So, and uh, for social issues like this, it's really very difficult to curtail or tackle. And that is why the people's involvement is really, really necessary. And that is why you, as an individual, you have to take the first step to say no to gender-based violence. When you say no to gender-based violence, then we then it will grow bigger, and um, other individuals will also grow to see that it's a uh, menace in the society, and we need to curb it. Whether the government comes in or not, it's our responsible our responsibility as individuals to actually say no to gender-based violence. Okay, so thank you very, very much for your insight on this topic. And just before we go, as we're wrapping up this program, I want to leave you with one more video on this gender-based violence. Stay with us. How can we reduce violence? We must end impunity and change social norms related to the acceptability of violence and the subordination of women. We must champion ways of being a man that are nonviolent, gender equitable, and encourage respect. We must protect children from violence and nurture happy, healthy, and safe homes for them to grow up in. We must work with young people to nurture healthy sexual practices and promote respectful and equal relationships. We know that violence is preventable, and we now know how. Let's work together and stop it. So, Mr. Biba, what is your final take? What's your final call to action for youths that are listening and watching us today? Yeah, uh, for the youth out there, I want to say that you can do better and you are the leaders of tomorrow. In fact, you are the leaders of today. So, you have to put your foot down and ensure that the society is enabling for women and girls, for you as, you, as uh, a youth, and um, to make sure that. Um, you demand for accountability in all spheres of your affairs. So with that, I want to wrap up with say no to gender-based violence and support a zero-tolerant society on violence against women and girls. Okay, thank you very much. You know, youth can, youth can, youth can. Youth can say no to gender-based violence. With this, we're going to be calling as a wrap on today's episode of your darling program. I believe you've learned a lot because I've been well enriched. Thank you for watching and keep watching Youth Can on ITV. Follow us on YouTube, ITV, and watch your darling program, Youth Can, in case you've missed several episodes. Drop your text messages, your comments, to tell us what you feel about our topic of discourse. Thanks for watching, and I remain your amiable host, Joy Igoche.